Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a while. I was out of town, it was my birthday too, so. Um, and it's a weird day because someone asked a question on Twitter. I just posted shots of some new gun stuff. They're wondering how we get these orbital particle effects. That was a bad shot. Oh, that was one. It's right here. So sparks coming out. Um, the idea is to sort of have. It looks a little magical because it's kind of so swirly, um, but um, you've probably seen it before in other games, even for maybe something more realistic. Um, Final Fantasy XV has an effect kind of like that for its um, hit sparks. Just gonna double check recording. Um, and so much I can say here. <laughs> um, I used to think it was kind of complicated, um, but then I've seen it in other games. Um, Final Fantasy VII Remake has it. Um, it's real subtle, like on some of their explosions and stuff, but it adds a lot. It adds um, some flavor. Um, Grand Blue Fantasy versus Grand Blue versus, I guess. Um, has some spark effects like that. Um, instead of using a particle, we're actually using a mesh. So that is um, sort of the trick here. A lot of times, you know, I smack talk um, particles because I think they, it's like this particle system in Unity is so nice, but it's just, gives me a lot of headaches too. Although I do use it for this little aftershock where the bullets go through like that. Right here, these. Um, but, you know, we like meshes. So uh, it's nothing really too new. It's just sort of, um, you know, a new way to use it. Like another one of the effects we've had before, I'm trying to get a good shot of it. Scene. And, um, just use a ring mesh. Um, it's a little uh, more complicated than that, but you can just use a, um, just a flat one that we've done before. And we're going to go through the whole thing here since um, someone had a specific question regarding it. It's also in to sort of <laughs> give myself away. Um, there was another game that I saw it in, but it's also in Devil May Cry. Uh, when you do a charge shot with, um, with Nero, at least in four, I have played five, but I can't remember if it's in it. Um, and it's really subtle. Um, you can look it up or load it up for yourself. And there's this sort of orbital effect. Mine is a little bit more chaotic. That was the look I wanted. Theirs is a little more structured. We'll get into all that and sort of designing it. First, let's get into how we make it. So, you were here. Or if it's them, it might be. Hello. In any case. Oh, I meant to actually show that a little bit there. So, we'll show exactly what we have. And then we'll go through and make it. So, I have, you know, after maybe four, maybe just three years of not updating Unity. I didn't think it had been that long. Um, finally updated. I didn't get the very newest one because I would have to redo my UI and event system. I tried really hard to do it, but it was like too much of a pain. But um, Mesh here, here's the one. Prefab. You know, basically it's this ring mesh and we'll go ahead and load it up. VFX tires, what I call it, because they're not quite rings, they're more like tires. We'll go through how to make it again, even though we've covered it in, the, in this channel before. Again. But basically we have this, and a lot of times, let's see, it. excuse me. Really? More like this. And in Devil May Cry, and even like, I don't know, like modern games have it. I'll just use this because it's kind of good enough. I like to just give it a little more mass like this. So we have that. And we just have a simple particle effect. It's not going to look too interesting. Just, you know, thick right here and then a little trail out here. It depends on the kind of look you want. Going, yeah, you bet. 
So, I can't remember if I mentioned, sorry, you know I like to ramble. This is an effect you can do with particles, um, even in the Unity particle system. Like I mentioned, not a fan of particles, at least using them in Unity. And as I mature as a game dev, I really start to like these mesh-based ones more. I used to think that the control, like the sort of limited nature of them was a limitation, but now I, and I like their unity, like in the effects, it, sort of a consistency that I think is strong. So we have a little particle here, and then we just rotate it around like this. What we do to make it more interesting is, you know, stretch it out in different ways. This. So it goes around like that. And then you can also I randomize that stretchiness and randomize the rotation at runtime. And the idea again is that it's sort of like a spark coming out. And so, you know, I sort of line it up. But right here is the where the muzzle flash is. So in our animation, we start like right here. Basically, go better in game. The idea is that it comes out like that. Really, think of it more like this. Also, flashes right here, the gun right here, and the spark comes out like that. Um, and the idea of it sort of coming back, um, or like going forward and then coming back gives it a nice contrast and sort of like, I don't know, it it gives contrast and sort of complements like the really straight fast nature of the bullet. So, and then it just looks dope. <laughs> so maybe just explain it that way, overthinking it. But, you know, over the course of just 10 frames or so, I go about the whole distance. I don't actually use much of an interesting curve The new Unity doesn't know exactly what I'm using. And it's not new, actually. <laughs> um, kind of goes like that. Yeah, not that uh, complicated. And then I just fade it out. So to do the whole thing from scratch, and open up Blender, delete everything like we do. Shift A, create a cylinder. It can be, you know, however high poly you want. I'll just do the default here. A new window. E. The image editor. Hit tab. X. Delete faces. And then we're going to grab this back edge or whatever one you want. Control 1. This back edge here. To hit, um, we could hit V, which I think actually works better a lot of times. Sometimes this totally messes up though, so we're just going to give it a shot. We're gonna a to select all, U to unwrap. We're going to do cylinder projection, and it worked fine. So that's sort of our, our base there. Already we're good to go. Um, if we're doing like those rings we've done in other videos where you want it, you know, like this. Which is actually in that Final Fantasy VII remake that I mentioned. This is more what they had. Um, it was like this, and the effects were coming out like that. Um, I know that there's, and there's probably people with like way better VFX experience than me, um, do more advanced stuff like that, where each one of these faces will um, billboard themselves. So you can do that with the trail render in Unity, but it wants to update so the trail render will like sort of not stay in place like you want. But I've seen, sorry, this is another tangent, but in Astral Chain I've seen it where like, you know, we have these big, you know, platinum-esque, you know, slash effects that go like this. But when we wrote, but when the screen rotates like this, these faces actually face up like this. And um, it's kind of cool. I would like to know how they did that. <laughs> so anyway, back on task, sorry. 
Uh, we just unwrap that and we got that right here. And if we wanted to make it more interesting, do a few loop cuts, scale shift Z, so that way we don't go up and down, we only go laterally. I'll um, right click to um, that. And there you have that. So basically, you know, it just lives, you know, the UVs are lined up like this. And then we animate those UVs. Go with in game, so it's a little. Oops, too easy. Over here, so. Post processing will show up in game view. We have some nice fire effects. Um, I have some blue glow. It's dynamic to what weapon you have equipped, so the colors change. We just have some red here. Questions? I think it's better to use message instead of particle systems. Yeah, generally. I mean, if you like particles, you should use them. I just have a lot of frustrations with them. And I'm learning that, um, you know, honestly, it's just another tool. Like, it's, I kind of poo poo particles a lot, and I shouldn't. I just have my own frustrations with them. Um, the idea is just to increase our skill set so we can use things. You know, as we see fit. But I do like this mesh based stuff. I think it's um really strong. Here. Better be Go through. Dated for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> but basically, it just does that. And the glow fades out. Um, not much else to explain. What we're animating um, is just this offset here. I guess I should just start from the beginning. I would. So pretend we save this. Trust me, it's identical. <laughs> this. Well, you know, I should do it totally from scratch. Let's do it. Let's do it right. Sorry, 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 sorry. So. In 3D object. Um, we'll do a quad for now. It doesn't, we're actually going to. The mesh. Normally, actually. We want is a mesh filter and that's the R VFX tire thing that we made. The simpler one. But that would be the mesh renderer. And then on that renderer we need a material. Duplicate this one, you can right click and do create material. <laughs> Click on that old texture and actually duplicate that one so we can kind of go through and change that as well. Fire material, bring it up. Go in here. A new texture we made. It was a little fast. I'm sorry. Um, have that set up. Basically, it's this offset here that we're it's so annoying. Um, 
The reason we like a mesh for this is because we're doing these sort of rounded effects. Um, you know, we want this trail and we want it to be rounded like that. And you can do trail renderers on your particles. That's an option. Mention it. But the idea is if we have like a complicated shape, it's not complicated, but like a specific shape that's not necessarily like straight. Um, it's just nicer. You can just, again, it's just another tool to use. But I find them really useful. In in my animation, it kind of, maybe this is off topic, it kind of goes all the way around. Um, just based on my implementation, I would have to do some sort of extra programming I don't want to get into quite yet. But it would be nice to limit the effect so that, say we, do something like this and instead of going like all the way around we could limit it from like here to here and it's going to give you way different shapes it's going to give you like um sort of like straighter sort of sparks so like sparks that are like coming out but only bend slightly um that's just an option for you but and i'll actually go it's here where i like to have like an offset that's where we call this one mesh. Or empty. Or pivot or offset. That one. Actual. X. And then. Whoops. Super not important, but I guess something particle works, but they're kind of painful to learn. Could have other options, yeah. I agree. Scales here. That for us. So like I mentioned, have like the muzzle kind of like starting here and it comes around that or it can go other ways. So at runtime, I rotate, I randomize this rotation like this, like on our, like 360 degrees, like random, like, you know what I mean? So I can't think of the word, <laughs> um, like a full randomization of a, like this whole rotation here. But on these ones, I kind of just do it a little bit. Um, that way I can kind of create like a star shape with like three particles or three of these effects. So it sort of stays, you know, like spread out around a circle. Um, so there's only like a little bit like this, but then they're sort of like individual rotations um, can change a lot. So like if you're looking straight on at the muzzle, it's always going to give you sort of a nice star shape, so it's always filling out um, around the muzzle. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and then we randomize the, sh the scale in this rotation just to give us variety. That. All right, if I had planned this, I would have said all this in like the right order, but you have to forgive me. I'm going to click on animation. I'm going to click on this one. We're going to go ahead and just hit create here. And do a real muzzle. And I like to rename these because control. And some of this stuff is going to be, you'll have to see in like other videos that I have, and some of it I haven't quite covered yet. But basically, this VFX control thing here, and then we also control it like in an event level. So each instance of one, we can create some randomization or specifications, and then we can create some general implementation here. Um, like for this, so you know, by default, it just sort of goes on a character. 
But then we can create like other things like, you know, spawning right on the gun, which is what we deparent it right away. Anyway, it just happened to be open, so I <laughs> game, but finally getting into it. So click on the mesh and we'll hit record. So now it's you know, waiting for some input stuff. Go back a little bit. You know, we imagine the muzzle's right here, and we'll actually have some other effects on there. We'll go over it really quick to show how we do it after we do this. Um, and then see here, or scroll it around. I think I did it in about ten frames. Go ahead and go all the way around there. And then for another 10 frames, maybe 25 or so, just sort of go a little bit more. And you could smooth that out to however you like it. Um, got all these curves. Here. Little whack. And it looks a lot better like in the game. Sometimes when you're doing it like not like this it can look bad. So let's do it the right way. Go ahead. Put it up. Um sorry, just a moment. to ask me the let okay oh we need to make this a prefab here basic prefab we're gonna go into our shot and we're gonna turn off all these other ones this is um engine specific so this is my implementation um sorry if you don't have this because <laughs> really specific to um my game. Once, turn those off. Game. We fire. We don't have those orbital effects, but we have those other effects. But now we can test it, you know, with them. Add an event, and this is going to let us tweak it, um, you know, alongside the actual you know where it's going to exist in the game called to, no oh right <laughs> script that rock huh what did i do <laughs> Cause it, what? <laughs> I'm so confused, what? What's going on? Are y'all confused as me? <laughs> Why was it? Oh, oh my god. Y'all, I'm sorry. Um, I don't have it like implemented in the move set yet, but she has um, like a jumping version of it, and I was not doing that grounded version. So there we go, awesome. So I actually want sort of a radial one like that on this gun too. Um, if we want, <laughs> we can actually do that real quick, just as we play around. Open this up. Now on this animation, let's try and like make it a little more interesting. This is a separate effect sort of thing. What we would want to do, I guess we'll just do it real quick, is raise this up. So this is already updating in the prefab. This is real nice. I'm not used to this um, in Unity. I'm used to like doing it in a different way. But if we go ahead and fire, now it's coming off of that spot like that. Let's actually do that fade out first because I'm looking a little 
for animate. So, board, and dummy intensity of potential. Let's go to zero. We'll make it simple for now. Let's game. And I have a glow effect too that I here. And then with the final sort of fade, I would go up to zero. Now we're getting more like recent. Oh, looks like I'm hitting some enemies. I'm getting a little bit of a bug where the damage numbers are off screen. See, it's sort of like fire starts out here. We might want to start lower and go. Honestly, it looks okay. It kind of goes around too much. Open this up. Start lower. Don't have it fall too much. Give this a shot. Pretty fast. Lasts a little bit longer. That's looking better. It's looking pretty fat. Open it up here. Just scale it a bit like this. Not split on. Well, if we're gonna do that animation, shoot. This is why we have like extra pivots and things. Ugh. We'll get to it. Maybe we'll do a separate effect. And in sort of by default, I do it like this. But in my implementation, you can control it like per event, so kind of doesn't matter. But as a general rule, I wanted it looking more like this. Whoops! I was animating that. Big mistake. Use it here. And then game. That's looking better. Again, it's kind of maybe going around too far. Go ahead and add up some more. That's looking cool. It's looking real good. Again. Built the wrong way. Maybe. Yes. So now we're getting cool. Now, I mentioned kind of have like some specific sort of random or not randomization, but um, like angles and things I can do like per particle down in here. But then I also have an implementation where I can like have some full randomness um, for ease. Go ahead and randomize, which one is this, X? So we'll just randomize along the X. Patient X. 360, negative 360. I know that's redundant, but I always do it that way. I think it's fun, I guess. So now when we're firing, we have some randomness, and that already looks badass. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, that kind of concludes, like, that part of it. Um, don't have any questions. We can uh, go ahead and add another one. Pretty cool. Like, you know, when we're, we're going along there, it doesn't quite look that interesting. And then all of a sudden, get that full implementation. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So that's why. It, it can look just a little bit whack at first. Um, you just got to tweak it a bit, test it in there. And then all of a sudden, we'll have two in there. It's doing more than that. And see, you can see how like really random this one is compared to um, like this. That's why I was mentioning um, I actually don't do it quite that random. Um, at the event level, I can also. Um, sort of have that rotation.
on the X. So I'll show that because you know this is part of the two. So let's actually turn off that random this real quick. And then at the per particle level or per event level, do like negative 45 and then a 45. So now when we fire it, always going to have, it was quite the right rotation. I think it's a little bit different than, actually I knew that it was, <laughs> is it this one? Huh? I swear it's X, maybe it's, yeah, let's check it in the scene. Yeah, it should be that, negative 45 and 45, it's a little bit weird. Oh, by default, oh no, that should be a little bit messed up because of that. That's my bad. So we want like a 90 on the Y too. Sorry, right. I'm gonna keep repeating myself, but this is like my own implementation. I actually did a video on this sort of thing, but it's really strong in the end. So now let's get up. It's a little wrong. Oh, <laughs> did a negative there. So now we have two. And then, you know what I mean? And so we could have like a third one that's going straight down. And then along this Y or Z or whatever, whoops. We could do, so on the X, which is what we aligned first, we could just do like a little bit. And then on the Z, uh, or excuse me, the Y, do that. Actually, I should have shown the initial. That's not quite right. Um, you might find it easier. I think it looks good in my other implementation here, but yeah, I'm thinking the other one just looked better. Let's just keep it at this. My bad. The axis messed up. It almost looks cool. Thanks. I know it's a really easy thing, and that's what's cool. You don't have to do like something crazy with like particles. Like this looks ba already. Um, and then we can do the next level and do it with our scale as well. Check our. And this is the part that's scaling. It's it's at the parent level. So maybe we want a lot with the y, and then like a little with the x. But we can just mess with it as we, you know, as we play. So a lot at the Y and a little at the X, is that what I said? So scale max at the Y to 0.9. And this is relative, so it's not going to set it. It's going to scale it. Try that. A little bit too big. Let's actually just do this. Smaller ones too. A little bit of that. I'm thinking the scale is a little bit too big on the Z just in general. We disagree. Like that. Pretty sweet. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you have any questions. That about covers it. Um, like I mentioned before, maybe just real quick. Way I could. I want to have this eventually in my own implementation, but it would be nice to be able to just scale this. So sometimes, you know, we'd have some randomness where maybe some of them only go like about that much. See what I mean? And then you have like different. God, that looks badass. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like now we're just getting like spark effects rather than that full orbital. It looks so sick. I might do that today. I mean, let's be 
let's be honest probably 100 percent gonna do that today and then like if we had you know a mix of those you know what i'm saying see now you have like and you'd have to adjust the timing a bit based on that too but and it's just hard because animations are like really hard like this value is going to be this on this frame 100 percent, and so you kind of have to go in after the fact and adjust it um although i think you can do like additive animation i don't know so yeah all right we're getting a lot of viewers hello everyone <laughs> i'm kind of like done already um that's already looking sick a little too thick. As well, get random. And already now it's like it doesn't loop around back as much. And so it looks more like a spark, you know what I mean? Real short ones looked really cool. That. Gosh. Ugh. Love video games so much. And then having a mix of those would just be so awesome. And like I mentioned, having the timing um change a little bit too, especially based on the distance it has to go, would look better. Because as we shorten this, it's still taking this long to go that same to go less of a distance. That's why they look so slow. Um, we also have a bit of a speed multiplier in here, so we have some fast and slow ones. It gives us even more. Oh, looks so sick! Even more variety. But yeah, that about covers it. You know, on top of that, I guess just for the muzzle flash, I guess the title of this is like VFX. You know, done effects. This one's real simple. Um, even if you see like in movies, it's not that movies should be like our ideal. They shouldn't at all, honestly. Be mad just thinking about it. Um, click on that. This is just a really basic animation. At first, it was like it was just a fade out. I didn't even scale it. But it just goes like that. And then I just have a bunch of them layered. You could billboard it, but billboarding pisses me off sometimes. It doesn't do what I want. You know, you can do like just Y billboarding or, you know, just Z billboarding. Where it's like only one rotation billboards to the screen or whatever. Um, and at first I actually had this go a lot slower. Or excuse me, a lot faster. Um, what I'm getting at, I know I um a lot, sorry. What I'm getting at is, you know, like in movies, like muzzle flares, muzzle flashes, like they last for like a frame. But we can stylize it by letting it sort of fade out like that. So basically, I just scale it, scale it down. Common animation you'll see in like a lot of effects is you know scale down the X and scale out the Y. For the particles, I don't want to get into it too much. Um, Basically, just have shoot out a bunch of particles going like this, a pretty fast speed, um, and then I just dampen the speed like right away, and I have them spawn a little bit out here, so they're not all spawning right here. I think. I went back and forth on that. Now I can't remember, but I believe I'm actually having them sp spawn. It's a cone with zero radius or with a small radius, so there's a little bit, like you know, sort of separation, like left and right, like laterally. Um, but it's like a zero angle, so they're all just going straight. You just shoot them out, and they start long and skinny, and then they get um, sort of rounded and just sort of 
and I have the pivot on the top. So when I fire, so even though they're actually stopped after a couple frames, their backs scale in. So like it looks like they're moving forward still. Uh, I don't know. I think that covers it. Kind of just carrying on at this point. This doesn't have any questions. VFX, some kind of let's see. VFX, some kind of behavior state machine script. What the heck? Yeah, so it's, and I don't necessarily control stuff in the mesh. Um, go ahead and load that up. So yeah, this is a state machine thing. And it basically just holds variables. Um, if I load this up, it doesn't do much. Um, I had it do stuff in the beginning. The only thing it really does is like destroy itself after it you know, finishes up its animation. A lot of this stuff happens at the spawn time. So, my implementation here, um, so I have a prefab VFX, and it's actually, well, I guess this one's only VFX stuff. It instantiates an object, and then it checks for things. Um, just sort of like components. So it look, checks to see if it has an animator, and then if it has an animator, it checks to see um, if it has this script right here. So my animator, and this implementation is like get behaviors, plural, so it just grabs them all. There's almost always just one in mine. And then it just takes those variables and does different things to them. So like I mentioned, we have this gun specific one, and so it'll. Um, you know, by default, it just does it to the character and does it to their character facing. So that way it's always, you know, it's C forward. It's going to be the same as, you know, the character forward is going to be the same as, going to match the character forward. I'm sorry. But then we can do some other stuff if we need. Um, like for, there's this ground bounce effect. Where it needs to, um, because if they, I don't actually have it. This is a bad example, but like if they bounce off the wall, then <coughs> we want the effect to sort of come off the wall rather than being dependent on the character. You can see that real quick. Like this effect along the ground. That's just another example. Effects with meshes takes it does it gives you control it makes it more artistic like like particles are dope but if you just and the more like little tricks you learn like this um you know it looked whack when we were first starting it. it's just like going in a circle it's like big deal but like yeah I, don't know, I think they're awesome the vfx node and the animator controller is that what you mean that i answered that correctly but yeah you would just like if you wanted to do that you would make uh state machine behavior script and it is really just there to I mean it does update some stuff it's just really there to hold variables so that way I can sort of have you know prefab wide effects and changes and then I can also have event specific ones like that I have down here that was my question thing sweet alrighty I think that covers it if you have any other questions about VFX or anything, let me know. I'm always trying to keep my eyes peeled for new ones. I was really excited about this one. And it's one I had seen before, but um, sometimes when you see one, it's like, wow, like that's really cool. It looks hard. Um, but then you might catch it in a certain light. Like you'll see, like in the Devil May Cry one, like I saw the edges of like the ring. Um, oh, I meant to mess with the... Make the texture. Hopefully that's easy to understand. But you can kind of see the the seams like in the game development. It's like, oh, they just used a ring. And so at least you can start there. And you can know that even though it's this really awesome looking effect. There's like a simple implementation. It's also better for us. And, um, you know, with just a few variables and randomization, 
we don't have to like change the effect at all. We're still getting that motion. That's ideal. Like if check out some of the other videos on the channel. We just cover that topic a lot. <laughs> anyway, um, like always, I'll upload this. Um, not the video, but like I will upload the video to YouTube. But the um, the assets as well will be made available for free um, in the down in the description of the video. And if you ever have any questions, let me know. Thank y'all so much. Take care. Before we go, let's see. That's a good way to start it. So dope. And then my implementation a little bit different. All right, thanks. See you later.